What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to talk about one of the craziest murderers. But first and foremost, this is But Noir Radio. This is a place where we talk about anything and everything. And if you don't have an open mind, please don't even bother listening because you're not going to like it. GTFO. Exactly. So for those who are new here, I'm Eddie Stanzikio. I'm one of your hosts. And what you see there is a squirrel called... Beefy, who has the anxiety, your favorite shit talking squirrel friend. <laughs> squirrel friend. Squirrel friend. So, um, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Squirrel friend. You know what I mean? Squirrel friend. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's a good one. Squirrel friend. You, you, you just made it out. I think that was awesome, squirrel friend. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, squirrel um, friend. <laughs> so, guys, just remember, right? Um, if you enjoyed this content so far, Remember, press the like button if you're listening to us from the YouTube podcast or whatever, wherever you are. Find a way to tell the algorithm that you enjoy this so we can get better and stronger every day. But that, be, that being said, Biffy, how are you today? Really quickly, go. Uh, I'm all right. You know, depression has a way of uh, getting the getting the cause into you. But it's you know, mm. up and down, good days and bad. Mm. You can't appreciate a little sunshine if you don't have a little rain every now and again. You know what? There's an expression in French, and they talk about how um, uh, after the rain, uh, after the sunshine comes the rain, and nobody talks about that. It's true. Mm -hmm. It can't be sunshine all the time. There needs to be some rain. You know. Yeah. Um, all how right. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm just. I'm still recovering from this stupid sickness that I've had for a couple of weeks. It's okay. It's okay. I'm. I'm doing okay. And uh, I, we can elaborate a little further. But I. I have. The utmost haste in French is called it at. I cannot wait to hear you talk about this absolutely next criminal. And um, let's go. Let's talk about the hungry. What's his name? Dahmer. The whole the Dahmer of it all. Yes, he's very hungry. He's very hungry, and he likes he me. A, he has <laughs> an, an insatiable appetite. I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, and that may take on multiple meanings as we okay. go through the story <laughs> on what exactly we will elaborate on what exactly that appetite means because we aren't necessarily just talking about food and we aren't necessarily just talking about bodies and where he puts those bodies and how he what he does with them. Okay. We might blur those lines a little bit as well. But you know that's okay. We're, Don't we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there together. We'll do it together. All right, as friends, as a group. We'll all go down that rabbit hole together, friends. That squirrel hole. <laughs> so I got a question for you as, before we start this, Alistair. Let's go. Yes. I want you to put yourself back to little little Alistair back in, in uh, you know, middle school, grade school, even high school. Oh, God. Okay. Was there a kid in your class or in your neighborhood who was maybe just a little weird? Maybe somebody that everybody called the weird kid. Oh yeah, hundred percent. There were like a thousand of those. Yes. <laughs> oh, there are a thousand. Well, can you? Yeah, but there was always a, there was a one kid who was very. He was the weirdest of them all. I know exactly. His name was Jesus. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> That's who we're looking for. The Is weird he? kid. Oh yes, yes, the weird kid. Everybody yeah. has one when they think back to their high school days or their middle school days. They're like, man, remember that weird kid? Yeah. And you might bump into somebody like. Dude, I wonder what weird kids up to nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is very much the plight of Jeffrey Dahmer in his great school years. And the we weird have to kid is hungry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. yeah, yeah. Ap appetite for something we don't need to discuss. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I you, I had a weird kid. You want to hear about my weird kid quick? Yeah, go ahead. What's your weird kid situation? Uh, so my weird kid, I I grew up in an apartment complex where there was like many, many buildings and he lived mm. in the same building as me. And he was the kid that was out like playing in the sewage line at the apartment complex. He would like, <laughs> eat he would like eat frog's eyes. At one point we found, at one point we, there was like a grill that was in the apartment complex that everybody could use. And we found like a bunch of frogs that had been skewered together and like barbecued <laughs> and we never proved it. We never proved it. But I guarantee you, it was our effing weird kid had barbecued those. <laughs> I remember I was, I was horrified. For me as a child, it was like next level, like dark. Like there is something messed up with this dude. <laughs> but like, actually now as an adult, like maybe he just liked the taste of frogs. That's not that weird. People eat frogs what? all the time. 
Yeah, in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going out catching frogs. Right yeah. Sewage line. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> wow, beefy. Mm, mm-hmm, mm, mm, mm. But just like the weird kid from my childhood, Jeffrey Dahmer was himself very obsessed from a young age with frogs and death. Yeah. According to his classmates at Revere High School in Richfield, Ohio, and I shall show you that school right there. There it is. Whoa, Revere that, High. That's a Look nice, at them. Look at the kids. That's a nice looking school. Oh, that guy. It it's a fucking mm. nice high school, right? Sunlight. I think they did a. I think they did a renovation back in the uh, late seventies <laughs> when Dahmer was going to high school. I don't think this is how it looked. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. You know what a horrible reputation Dahmer went to this school. I was about to say. Uh, I wonder if they have like a you know a trophy case somewhere, and they've just got like somebody's severed arm in there, like the high school of, of Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> like here we have our, our Olympic athlete and our NFL player, you know, Todd, whatever. And then boom, Jeffrey Donner and like a head in a pickle jar. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm. Nice school. So okay, yeah, this is uh, where Dahmer would go. He was definitely their weird kid. He would openly drink in class. Uh, he would call his alcohol his medicine. Oh, really? Um, oh, no, wait, yeah, yeah. He sounds really cool at first. Wait a minute. <laughs> Well, so that's that's the thing about this is I kind of poured into the case files. Wow. The media the media has very much classified him as like a social outcast, and that's really not what was going on. Here. Well, it like, was, yeah. Oh, look he at was that. social. Um, he was on the he was on the tennis team. Ooh. He was in a high school band. He really wasn't like an outcast like that. He was just weird. He wasn't antisocial. He was just kind of awkward. Mm. And, you know, his classmates, they'd actually kind of look back at him and label him as kind of a class clown of sorts. They even, uh. um, they had a, a term they all coined called pulling a Dahmer, where uh, they pretend to like have a seizure or do like the cerebral palsy thing, you know, where you curl your hands up and uh, they, they call that, uh, you know, doing a Dahmer. Can I just tell you something really quickly? Because that term is still very much well present today, except it's not making the uh, it's yeah. more like if you if they say you're putting a dharma that means you're acting way too weird with food mm -hmm, if you know what i mean oh, food. really i never heard that yeah it's, it's like you know some people are like sadists they like they like to be beaten uh beaten like oh. not beaten with a stick but like bite they like oh, to be bitten. beaten yeah, 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 yeah. Bitten. right and so there's there's a term in um in uh, underground circles called being the dharma which is huh. very crazy but yeah it exists it's not being cool, it's about being uncool, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. gotcha. That's, that's very much Dahmer, for sure. I don't think they were, so, like, here's the thing. I think mm -hmm. they were making fun of him, yeah, and they were. he saw it as attention. And yeah. he really didn't care, like, what the context of it was. He just liked that people were paying attention to him. So yeah. he probably he probably leaned into it, you know what I mean? Like, when they say, hey, Dahmer, come over here and do your your cerebral palsy act you know he was probably more than willing to run and dance for him i guess he why do you like to say in that voice though oh i'm sorry hey, <laughs> that's how i that's how i picture him talking have you seen the right. custom he's very much monotone like i, love it. I just didn't want people to leave me i just had a band <laughs> so i really wanted with a boyfriend to love me. <laughs> oh you're so funny okay but yeah he would uh he would play pranks on people um, I guess there were certain times where people would pay him money to do these little stunts, really? like the little acts. Yeah, and he would use that money to go buy beer. So, like I said, he was a uh, he was he was part of the zeitgeist in the school. He wasn't like off in the corner, the lurker, like the shoot up the school. You yeah. know, people knew him. He didn't have so much friends as people just kind of knew him as the weird kid. Yeah. But you know, yeah, he was a part of it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's almost like the kids love to make fun of him. Therefore, there they, they love them. <sighs> Not unattractive. Oh my god, this is just ridiculous. Can I, like, it's ridiculous. You pick this picture. You remove the serial killer out of this. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, a, a kind of a little cutie, right? That's a that's a cutie. Yeah, it's a good looking man. God damn it, it's a good looking man. Darn it, murderer. <laughs> yeah, too bad he's such a piece of shit. Uh, so in the, in, the latter, <laughs> yeah. in the latter half, in the latter half of Dahmer's senior year, his parents would split up. Womp womp womp. You know, oh. happens to, happens to all of us. You know, happens nowadays, 
Nowadays, and we don't all turn out to be murderers. Yeah. It's almost like more of, a, more of a weird thing to have parents that are still married nowadays. You know what I mean? It's like it used to be there was a stigma attached to being divorced. And now it's like, well, your parents are still together? How do they do it? Wait, what's the secret? <laughs> what's the secret? <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. But, uh, You're right. Uh, this would see his mom and his brother uh, exit from their family home in the latter half of Jeffrey Dahmer's senior year to go live with relatives. And his father would, would really become kind of a uh, rec- like absentee parent. You know, while pursuing this life, he's got this new girlfriend. He's really not spending a whole lot of time at home. So Dahmer's yeah. just kind of there by alone. Mm-hmm. You know, often spending extended periods of time at home by himself. And... <laughs> When an 18 year old kid left to his own devices, what do you think yeah. he did? Uh, he drank. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> and he a, leaned into his passions, and we know what those were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Animals and death. So Just Dahmer's <laughs> senior year of high school very much consisted of drinking of alone, that. finding animals, animals, and animals. taxiderming them. Yeah. Death and animals and drinking are his passions. Let me ask from you. A very you young know? age. Do you think he was just kind of releasing a lot of his internal stress from like his divorced parents, his father not being around? It's like, I don't have a mother. I don't have a dad. No. What the hell with it all? So here's the thing about that, right? And it's important that I, I spoke about like the frog obsession from a young age because the fascination with death and the fascination with animals and taxidermy goes way before the split. I mean, there is certainly a facet of this where he is – leaning into those passions as escapism Mm. to get away from the pain of his parents being divorced and the seclusion. But these fascinations were instilled in him from a very, very, very young age. Yeah. Something, something happened where he became obsessed with not just animals, the dying of animals. And that obsession from a childhood would express itself in some wow. really horrifying ways as we will come to find out and you mix alcohol with that and then you know then it's like yeah kabam. all bet all mm. bets are off yeah we got a ticking time bomb mm. nice hair <laughs> yeah again you know they get with the 70s and the great hair it's just they were doing it right huh? yeah, the 70s man they were doing it right <laughs> what happened well in the 2000s <laughs> but as we speak about this divorce and yeah. the taxidermy and the death and how it would play a role in mm-hmm. his later years and the murders. Yeah. Um, this period in particular, the one we're discussing right now, this yeah. uh, latter half of Jeffrey Dahmer's senior year, would play a pivotal role in the murders and how Jeffrey Dahmer experiences and appreciates sex for the rest of his life. This six-month period. Damn it. Because it would instill in him a, a crippling, terrifying fear of abandonment which becomes the the central motivating factor at all of the murders really is this horrifying, terrifying fear of being alone. Damn it. Beefy go. (laughs) I mean, that, that was uh, really what I had to say in the subject, you know, this would, it would manifest itself in, in the later years as this crippling fear and it would end up leading him down just a horrifying path of abduction, torture, abduction, rape, torture, murder, cannibalism, necrophilia, yeah. mm-hmm. body oh, mutilation. Oh, I mean, I could keep going. The, the likes of which our country had never seen and likely probably will never see again, again. O- over the course of, of two decades. And it all starts with wow. the death of a man named Stephen Hicks. Stephen Hicks. St- who, who, Stephen? Who are you? Oh, that's Stephen. <laughs> that's Stephen. Nice Stevie hair Hicks. again. Damn it. The era. Look at it. Do they use product for those hair? Why do they all look silky, thickalicious? What is this that doesn't exist yeah, I know, in your life? You go, to, you go to get hair gel at the supermarket nowadays, and it's like it, uh, it's like glue. You know, hold it's glue. Like, what look kind at of product are they using? What are they doing that? <laughs> I'm black. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean? You know what I've learned to get it like all feathery like that? <clears throat> don't buy any hair gel. Don't buy the expensive products. I just buy uh, sea salt. It's a spray. It's just called, it's just salt and water. Oh. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Just think about it. Think about the days when, you, oh, I know you're bald now, but. Yeah, um, I, I'm black. I don't have white hair, but you know, my spouse is white and uh, my daughter's white and my in-laws are white, but then they all have good hair. So, you know, I'm familiar with yeah, even water. so, think about the days where you were at the beach. <laughs> Right, and you had yeah. the, the salt still in your hair, and it just 
it just fell perfectly. You don't know how or why. Yeah. It just whatever. He had beach hair. Yeah. Beach hair is sexy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. So, so you know, tip sexy. for anybody out there who is trying to find the right hair care product for you. Because I went through the whole rigmarole. I went through the hair paste and the gels. And I tried yeah. everything. And, uh, yeah, the sea salt, uh, it's the best. Anyways, <laughs> diatribe for another day. Okay. Let's talk about, let's talk about Stevie Hicks. Stephen Hicks. Hi, Stephen. Go. Yeah, uh, not, not a not a terrible looking guy himself. No, he's three not a terrible looking guy at all. So we're three weeks after Jeff Jeffrey Dahmer's graduation. We're in the summer of 1979. Ooh, does life get better? <laughs> and young Stevie, young Stevie Hicks had a mission on his mind. He was going to see the Michael Stanley Band. That's right. He had tickets to go see the Michael Stanley Band, Who and that, that was his goal. He was hitchhiking 24 hitchhiking. miles. 24 miles he was okay. going to hitchhike to the Michael second. Stanley band. Pause yep. for a second. You say hitchhiking? This is, look, this is what I'm saying. Please, let's talk race really quickly, okay? Black people don't hitchhike. We're too afraid. What the? <laughs> <laughs> too many crazy white people out there. You You're mean that, wrong. Thing, that thing when you go like that? Help yeah. me, stranger. Yeah, put me in your car. Take me where you want. No way! Yeah, okay. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. All right, Stephen Hick, so, <laughs> hitchhiking. Uh, so yeah, it's three weeks after, after graduation and, uh, we turn the story now to where our friend Jeffrey Dahmer is at this point in time. And it's very much the summer before college and Jeff has kind of found himself in what, uh, some of us would call a stupor. Now, I don't know if, if you've ever experienced this, Alistair. I'm sure some uh -huh. of our listeners have. Okay. Uh -huh. That's good. It's basically when you have no plans for a few days. Yeah. And you just go out and buy a lot of alcohol, and you commit yourself to the drink. Yeah, it's a it's a really dark dark yeah. thing to go and do. You almost yeah. have to be in a, in a painful place to yeah. really pursue it the right way. Because yeah. time and, and date and sunlight and, and daylight these things will all kind of like lose all meaning and fade to the wayside. You don't really as much as much go to bed and wake up and start your day yeah. as much as you do kind of just drink until you sleep. Yeah. And it's, then wake up yep. and do it all over again. You have a purpose. <laughs> Your mission is just, just not feel. Yeah. Yeah. That's very much what Jeffrey Dahmer was doing. He was in a stupor, a bender, one might even say. And uh, oh, it turns what is normally perceived as life into just kind of this drunken fog where it, you know, it doesn't really feel like reality. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. kind of this, of course, like augmented kind of thing. Yeah. And in this drunken fog, perhaps on a beer run, Dahmer happened to drive by a little Stevie Nicks. It's it's the seventies. People driving drunk was not that as it yeah. Like I didn't it was have today. Still, I heard. still yeah. really bad. Don't yeah. don't don't get that wrong. But it was yeah. done a lot more than it was than it was today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as he's driving drunk to get more beer, he drives past a bare-chested Stephen Hicks while hitchhiking to this Michael Stanley band. Right. Actually, wait. I think I have uh, here. Let's check these guys out. <laughs> Stop. I'm sorry. I just hitchhiking and never the concept never bought like nope. All right, so we can only listen to a little bit of this, but this is the band that uh, that Stevie Hicks was yeah, really excited to go hear. Yeah. Whoa. I dig it. It's, what? it's very much your standard uh, 70s hair metal fair, right? Like yeah! It's, it's, oh, it's wow. That's what the a same, good festival. The wow. same uh, CD catalog as like your your Kiss or your your yeah. Foreigner, you know, your, your John Bon Jovi. You can listen to just a little more of this. I love it. I, I, I can see, look, I grew up in the race. Oh, my God. That's amazeballs. I yeah, grew it up does get you pretty high. Era. Mm -mm, I would have been there too. <laughs> yeah, been. yeah. In the seventies, I mean, there, yeah. there wasn't a lot of choices out there. You know what I mean? I like, there were there. the, there were record stores and eight track tapes, but uh, yeah, this would have been number number one single or back in the day. Wow. This song was actually, uh, it's actually from the movie It. They had it in the movie It. Oh, poor Steven. Fun, fun fact for you. Hitchhiking. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> They're actually a really big Ohio band, which is where uh, all this is happening in Ohio. Ohio? Yeah, they're from mm -hmm. Cleveland. So it makes sense that uh, 
Mr. Mr. Hicks would be so um, adamant about going to see them. Let's see, I need the slideshow. Back to our slideshow here. There we are. There he is. There's Stevie. Hi, Stevie. Hitchhiker. Yep, 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 mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. So, Dahmer tells little young Stevie, uh, hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. You're trying, get... <laughs> You're trying to get to this concert. I got a car. I got some beers, you know? Why don't we go crush some beers, listen to a little MSB with our shirts off, and just see where the night takes us? Damn it. Sounds like a fucking awesome time, by the way. It sounds like a if fucking had, awesome time. <laughs> if I have my shirt off and I'm hitchhiking to MSB, you're goddamn right I'm getting I'm, in a car with Jeffrey yes, Dahmer. Absolutely. Oh, God. This is what makes me <laughs> even more uncomfortable because this would be... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, yes. Where are we going? What time? Now? Perfect. Now, uh, I have to imagine that Stevie probably uh, might have anticipated a, a, a little hint of romantic interest there. Of course. It may have, may have even rebuffed him a little, you know? Of course. Yeah. Kind of fired back, you know, we can do all that. That's fine. You can take me to Michael Stanley back because the only way I'm, the only way I'm not rocking out to some MSB tonight is over my dead body. <laughs> and it was at that point. A weird look came over Jeffrey Dahmer's eyes. Say less, bro. And open the car door and let him inside. <laughs> Wait, did you make this up? But this is for real. <laughs> this is for real. Oh my god, BB. I just got chills just now. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> That's a little <laughs> joke. Okay. That's a little joke I, I, I wrote. Because I can be like, Steven, then Steven, you're really stupid. Because I would <laughs> that would be like, Wait, what did you just say? I guess I just nope. I would have canceled plans right there and then. But butterflies came over. <laughs> oh, the butterflies moment, like, came through worms. Funny you should say that, Stevie. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> I would have. Oh, uh, no, oh boy, mm -hmm. we have we have fun in the show. We have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so there they are, you know, two young men cruising down the road of roads, having a good I like time. To, I like to imagine on. with with the dulcet tones. Of my town, banging on in the distance as they peer off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. So as the night progresses, the two men will proceed to drink beer shirtless, as promised, even lift some weights. However, oh. the mood shifted when Stevie started to talk about girls, and the slow realization poured over Dahmer that anything of a sexual or romantic nature would be rebuffed. It's likely Dahmer got very quiet and rescinded into his awkward behaviors at this moment. Because it wasn't much long after that, when Dahmer started to sense his new friend was getting antsy to leave, that Dahmer picked up one of the dumbbells, hit Stevie Nicks over the head twice with said dumbbell while he was sitting. From there, he kneeled on top of him and choked him to death with the bar of said dumbbell. After he was completely gone, Dahmer laid gently beside him, pressing his body ever so close to the now deceased Hicks, settling ever so gently in the crook of his lifeless arms gently stroking the chest hairs of his now new victim. Dahmer then stood up, masturbated, dragged the body down to the basement, dissected the limbs from the torso, and buried the remains in a shallow grave in his backyard. It wasn't until several weeks later that Dahmer would unearth these remains, pair the flesh from the bones, dissolve the bones in acid, flush all the liquid down the toilet, and smash anything still solid with a sledgehammer scattering the pieces around his home in the backyard to, quote, keep little pieces of him not too far away. MF, listen to me. Woo. What? Yeah. What? Crazy, can I, right? Can I just chills, 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 because there's yeah. nothing Stephen could have done any differently. Poor guy, right? yeah. Stephen was just having a good time and be like, Yo, I mean, like a... Like we said it, you know, I uh, I tried to present this in a in a way where you understand oh, wow. why the victim did what they did because yeah. he didn't do anything wrong, like you said. He was just a guy looking to go to a show and get laid, like yeah, like all of us, <laughs> yeah. And because and because Dahmer had a, a sexual fascination, he felt like he had the right to take this guy's life, and he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. It's easy to watch the Netflix show and kind of you know feel sorry for him. But no, no, ladies and gentlemen, he's an asshole. Stevie oh, Hicks had an, an, this man had an entire life ahead of him, which was stolen. Stolen. 
Wow. Anyways. Wow. It makes me sad. It does. It makes me sad. Yeah, 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 Steve, yeah. To think that he just sat in, oh, in Dahmer's backyard for decades in little pieces of bone. It, oh, it makes me angry. Oh, wait. Really That's even worse. He was dismembered. He yeah. was dismembered. Like, it's one thing to be dead. First of all, uh, knocked semi unconscious, being choked to death. Because you know, being choked, you don't you don't die right away. You first you're yeah. like, oh my god, I'm passing out, and then you pass yeah. out. It takes a while. It's, it's, it's a while. Effort. It's a and short. don't forget the pain. You feel all that pain, all of that pain. You are your the fight and flight is so activated that um, the terror, sheer terror, because you are very well aware that you are being killed. Mm. <laughs> it's like you know you are not going to come out of it alive, and you're trying really well. <laughs> That's the thing about head injuries is we, the brain is kind of a mysterious thing. Like how yeah. much he was cognizant of yeah. after being hit in the head with the dumbbell oh. dumbbell twice, he Very probably true. really wasn't all with it. You know, for the most part, he was probably in shock. You're actually actually right. Yeah, very true. Jesus, and let me tell you something. The fact that because he came back and dissolved the bones, like, wow, that is premeditation beyond beyond. Pretty Dumbledore. smart. He's doing that's, it a lot. That's intellect, exactly. He's doing a lot better job than most did. I mean, he didn't get caught for a long time for a reason. He's doing a better job than Koberger, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Not that he set the bar very high. Not that he set the bar. <laughs> Koberger. Wow, beefy. Okay, Steven. Dude, speaking of cheeseburgers, I've been, uh, like, dieting and eating vegan or whatever. And, dude, I went to oh, McDonald's oh. last night and got a quarter pounder for the first time in, like, a month. And you oh went to the back room and, and poop your brains out. I, I did get pretty sick after that. It was so, it was so good, bro. I can't even explain to you. Oh, no, I understand. Good. Because because I totally understand, Biffy. I popped like two or three of those french fries in my mouth, and they were just fresh out of the fryer, and I literally thought I was going to cry. <laughs> like, I, I can have french fries still. I just, like, I, did, I didn't want the nasty preservative stuff. You know, I'm trying to eat. I love it's not even like I'm trying to. I just want to be, be healthy. <laughs> And I, hit, I am too. Like it feels so great to wake yeah. up and just feel good. Anyways, yeah. we don't need to talk about uh, BP diet time. <laughs> just I thought about burgers and he said cold burger. You, mean you don't eat nuts and crackers all the time. Hmm. Well, I, I always I see yeah, the squirrel. I always see the, uh, the little How dare you behind you. Eat as a squirrel and fry. <laughs> Who the hell do you think you is? Okay, okay. That's right. back to Dahmer. Yes, Dahmer. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Six weeks later, after the death of Hicks, uh, Dahmer's father would return home. New fiance in tow. And they arrived to discover the house in absolute shambles and Jeffrey much of the same. Duh! It's a teenager with issues. Yeah. But even if he, he had no issues, you expect, you expect the house to be clean, Dad? You have your mind. Yeah, really. Get out of here. He's an 18-year-old kid. Yeah! <laughs> it was at this point his father used his alumni status to get Jeff accepted to the Ohio State University. <sighs> where Dahmer would major in isolated alcoholism with a minor and occasionally catching a class hungover as balls. <laughs> he flunked out <laughs> at the end of the, fir of the first semester. So, at the end of his rope, Jeff's dad shipped him off to the Army. Dahmer oh, was went? sent to... Yeah, he went to the Army. Oh. Dahmer was sent to Fort McClellan in Aniston... Al in Aniston, Alabama, and I will show you what that means. Here we are. Oh, oh. Well, wait, can we talk about the architecture? Look how gorgeous this building is. It looks look like a Spanish cabana. Yes, or like I was going to say, California. it looks like European European architecture. Look at that. They, whoever they hire for the architect, kudos. Money well spent. Tax yeah, I think dollars. this is like the main office building because we're wow, actually with the rest beautiful. of the site. Yeah, see, they don't oh. they don't all look like that. <laughs> oh. It's it's very much your standard uh, military base affair here. And uh, look, actually, I, I love in the picture there, bottom right, it says "officers open mess." What the hell does that mean? Open mess. <laughs> open mess hall. Oh, well, what does that mean? It means they well, a mess hall just means it's like cafeteria, but uh, open oh. mess means they get to eat anytime. Oh. I had no idea. Look at me being a foreigner. Perfect. Well, you know what? It looks very pretty with all those palm trees, all those evergreen. I, all I see is the running tracks. And Perfect. I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole on this one. Of course you did. <clears throat> Apparently, McClellan has been abandoned for oh. like a long time. And there's some really good footage in here. Kind of creepy. 
Wait, you mean to tell me? Yeah. Wait, pause for a second. You okay, mean to okay. tell me that that base is abandoned to, to, to yeah. today? There's no one yeah. there today. No, nope, this is it. It's not because of Dahmer, is it? I don't think so. Oh. Hey, uh, anybody who's really rich who uh, listens to this, that building is up for sale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I thought when I saw this zombie apocalypse. Oh it's right, like the perfect, the perfect area for the zombie BT, apocalypse. I'm picking yeah, get the address that. down. All the doors are bolted and everything. Like, oh man, it's wow. perfect. Like you know, they get the the, the jail in um, in Walking Dead becomes like the perfect setup. This looks effing great. Why are the doors bolted? What is it's, doing aban it's, a, it's abandoned. This guy snuck in. Wow. First of all, he's brave. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 With the, uh, wait a minute. This is an outdoor padlock door. Oh no, they were torturing people there. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no. 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 This is not. This is not a. No. They were doing fishy stuff where, there. Where Jammer uh, learned all of his skills. What? It's a door with an outside lock. What the hell are they doing over there? Well, no, no. So they they padlocked everything when it became abandoned. I'm oh, sure. to stop people so from. People... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you thought they were like holding people in there. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, there. We're like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Open the door. I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. They break in there. See like a bunch of skeletons. <laughs> stop. Knock and wait. Okay. Stop. Knock and wait. Stop. Uh, no, shut him down. Wait, don't wait. <laughs> oh, that was good. That's actually pretty good. Beat. No, no, really, not really. I like here. Let me find the stairs. Oh, here they are. I thought this was cool. Selfless service, so, honor, respect. Oh my God, too many words. You, who reads that this? That looks so military. military. That yeah, is so uh, military. It, man, How that gives now? me flashbacks. Oh, like standing in. The, I, I never was. I was never in the military, but I. Wait, I you got flashback. Out. You went in the military? No, no, no. I. Uh, I, I know these facilities and I very much know the zeitgeist. I did. Uh, I went through the fire two years of the fire academy. So I, believe me, oh, uh, it's not so as it's not as regimented. With... Oh, you feel But it's with... very much uh, mm. like this, where it's like you walk in a straight line, you tuck your shirt in, and the attention on deck, and you got to stand up. Okay. And then, oh, jeez. The reason oh, why I... the reason why I would be terrible can... in this situation because I'll be the one laughing on the line. I'll be like, <laughs> be quiet. I'd be like, oh crap. I'd be the one who's too, I'm too fidgety. I'll get fired or I'll get punished. I can like time. I can smell the green apple 4019 they used to clean this build. I guarantee you it. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I'm so distracted by the architecture though. Like, look at that. That's that's brute architecture, full of concrete. Oh yeah, this is I guarantee you this is like they like, kept all the beds. That's like I guarantee you that's what this was. Barracks. Oh. oh, what is that? What is That's that? That's cool. <laughs> Bad to the wow. bone. Yeah, this is where he went to boot camp, so it makes sense there's a drill sergeant thing there. So yeah, J Dahmer probably saw this at one point. You know, yeah. Terrified. Look at that. That makes me so want to join the army, America. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Great advertisement. What the hell is this? I qu I'm quitting this after like a week. I'm like, nah, I'll just get a job. What? Yeah, so that's where uh, Dahmer went to go through boot camp. At the end of his rope, his dad shipped him off to McClellan Base in Anniston, Alabama. Boot camp in the southern heat. Doesn't that just sound like a little slice of fucking hell on earth? You know I'm African, right? I love heat. It oh, does. Yeah, like I guess earth, minus the screaming and the shouting. No, 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 and no, no. I said mouth. hell. I said hell, my man. <laughs> hell on earth. Mosquitoes. No bueno. No, it doesn't matter. Sweating at night. No, oh, I can't! I can't sleep when I'm hot. I need well, like 69 mm -hmm. or below. Please, Tons I'm of blankets on me. Perfect. Oh, God! Love it. After boot camp, Dahmer would list in for the medical specialties in MOS, and he would be transferred to Fort Sam in Houston. In, no, Fort Sam in San Antonio, Texas. But Love due it. to frequent intoxication, both on and off duty, there he is. What the? He really was a drunk. So he really yeah. was a drunk. Oh, yeah. He was a news and no good filthy alcoholic for sure. Oh, my God. An alcoholic with a taste of, of, of murder. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> he, 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 he dangerous. He, a murder. Yeah, I'm trying to evade, you know, the YouTube algorithms. Yeah. Mm, he really, 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 really must be 
Yeah, it's very dangerous. Yeah, he was suppressing something for sure. Yeah. There's definitely something more going on here. But yeah, so uh, after frequent intoxications both on and off duty in a deployment to Baumholder, West Germany, Dahmer faced a military tribunal regarding a sexual assault of another officer. However, due to the Army's don't ask, don't tell policy still in effect in the late 1970s, Dahmer was honorably discharged from the military and giving a plane ticket to anywhere in the world. Oh, really? Anywhere in the world? Okay, tax dollars. Mm. Listen, what what's the nature of that sexual assault? Was it just a grab or was it a full blown like so we don't yeah, we don't know. In fact, to even find out information like it wasn't on the Wikipedia page, like to even find out about uh this whole issue because the army's more or less buried it, the details are very scarce. Like so that, who it happened to, yeah, who it happened to and what he did, who knows? We know that he ends up roofing people to knock them out. So I'm sure yeah. that was probably a facet to this. That's you know, exactly like, hey, what happened. Yeah. Let's get let's get yeah, drunk right. in my room. Yeah. Which of course I say, yes, yeah, sure, why not? Please, we've not yeah. done that. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um his sexual assault is all the way. Penetration yeah. all the way. Yeah. Probably. Disgusting yeah. person. Mm. Yeah, really. That's the shitty part. God, Ugh. God. I hate him. I hate yeah. him. I'm like as much him. as I kind of feel bad for him, like from no, an addiction no, standpoint. No. I hate it. Like him. somebody who's lonely too. I can yeah. def definitely don't sympathize give a crap. with him. No, he's yeah, horrible. He's no, asshole. he can burn. He can burn in hell. I hope you're burning in hell, sir. But actually, yeah. no. The devil is probably having fun with him. No, the devil. No, he's yeah, not. Dahmer burning probably him. likes it. Yeah, Dahmer probably likes it. So, uh, okay, you're in Dahmer's shoes. You get the plane ticket. Somebody hands you a plane ticket that just says, anywhere in the world, where are you going? Ooh. Now, I'm going back to France. Sorry, I'm a Frenchman. Mm -hmm. Going back to France. Uh, South That's France. not a bad answer. Paris? Yeah. No, not Paris. No, no, I'm going to the south. I'm going to Languedoc. Languedoc, Rosignon. South. I want the good weather. I want the peace. Yeah, Paris is too much work. I'm going to the south. Hmm. Yeah, where would you go? See, I thought about this a lot because I'd be very tempted to go home because I get homesick. But I think... Hmm. I think I'd go to New Orleans, to be honest. Uh, what? You just say you don't like mosquitoes. New Orleans is full of mosquitoes, darling. What? I know, yeah. Uh, the heat would be something I would have. Hey, you and know what? I, I, I lived in Hawaii in... for a year. As long as I have the air conditioning at night where so I can sleep, <laughs> I can deal with the heat. You know, if I get the That's AC at night. Man. Yeah, I'm definitely a man of creature comforts. But that was like, uh, I, I needed that in Hawaii. I, I, I searched for a place for forever until I could... Uh, Actually, you know what's weird about it in Hawaii? There are no bugs. Like I used to just instead no, of patios, no bugs. they have, you know they have what, are, what are called it's called a lanai, and I used to just leave the door open to my lanai twenty four seven. You know why there's no bugs? Why? It's, it has to do with the the ocean water it's salted, so the the mosquitoes oh, can't lay. Oh, exactly. look at that! Oh yes, oh yes. Welcome to science. And then uh, and then there's a uh, the the air. So the, there's even salt in the air. Please, flies don't like that stuff. So uh, nice. they like swampy, humid, and like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gross, 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 gross. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so I bet you there's bugs everywhere in New Orleans. They're yeah. probably the size of fruit bats. Fruit bats. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, uh, I've always wanted, I don't know, I just, I don't know why. Something about the city and the culture, it just, it looks so cool. I want to be a part of it. It's cool. You know, I've, I haven't been to New Orleans, New Orleans, but I have a client who, who's, who's based there and every time he has a he has a, a production company and every time he has a movie festival he's like come on Alistair, come on come on come on come on come on and he um i can't go oh, because... mardi gras yeah but no 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 he has his own movie festival in addition to mardi gras but i can't make it because it doesn't coincide to my schedule but i asked for pictures and it looks so much fun and it's all corporate people but they look like they're having fun you know what i mean i'm like damn it but i can't make you know it what? Alistair, we need to make time for our passions. I urge you to reconsider next year for movie festival to go check it out. You know, um, I actually talked about that with Chris. Now, next year, where we're going in terms of the passion, you know, I love to dance. You probably don't know that. And so I want to. Of course I do. You, dude, you <laughs> dance like three times an episode. <laughs> I want to go on a rave. I used to yes. love raves. And I want to go specifically beach raves. In the south of France, we, they do have beach raves. Going there. Yeah. Yeah. What? That and as a, as, a, as a grown up with my spouse, please come on, mom. Take care of the kid. 
and you just, I can just picture you with the glow sticks and your in your shirt off, six pack, just like glistening yep, in yep, in the uh, in the yep, fluorescent dark yep. light. Yes, oh. my brother-in-law is also a raver, and uh, it's something I'm like, come on, uh, his name is Edward. Come on, Edward, bring your girlfriend. We're going to go rave at the beach, like no kids, just us grown-ups. Mm -hmm. That's certain. It's in the works. I can't wait. Can't wait. You know they, you know they have uh, like rave <laughs> cruises too. You could just like go rave at night at the cruise and then spend the day at the really? beach afterwards. Yeah. Oh yeah, they have all kinds of theme cruises. They have Disney cruises. I went on. Uh, oh, do you know who Rob Gronkowski man. is? No, he was a tight end for the uh, um, New England Patriots, but he did it with what was called Bronx Party Ship one year, and I went on that, that to the Bahamas. It was insane, dude! It was like Flo Rida was there, and uh, oh, cool. Waka Waka, I got up on stage Waka and walked Flock of Flame and Gronkowski, and he was up there with the little. Th I'll show you some pictures sometime of me up on yeah, stage. Yeah, we love to see it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send them to you. I'm dancing and don't give a crap about anything else but the moment. But what's really cool about that is you're you're trapped on a cruise ship with all these celebrities. Like by the end of it, it was just like, oh hey, what's up, Rob? What's yeah. what's up to you? Can I get a couple of dollars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> They're like, what? You're rich, right? Can I get a couple millions? No, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, you're not even wrong. Because at one point, <laughs> my brother and I we snuck up to the VIP. The elevator doesn't even go up there unless you have a special key card. But we met a security guy who was on <laughs> the plane security team, and he brought us up there. And I was effing horrified, dude. They had a table full of all of the most expensive alcohol, just oh, yeah. totally free, just out in the middle. Just take as much as you want. The people that need the least get the most. And oh then you yeah. Go down one more deck, and you you pay eighteen bucks for a tiny little shot, like this. And I, this is like when I used to drink. It really made me. I went up there. I was like throwing up my thermos and like fucking the, uh, you know, uh, like pipes in the truck. You know what I mean? Like going down there and oh. It's, I was horrified. It's like you people should be down there buying the drinks for everybody fucking below for oh paying for this effing thing. Oh, it made me so angry. This is great. Look, this is where back, back in my days, no, we would have broken all those rules. We would have found a way to sneak stuff in. Come on. Now, if we I can't I don't do that anymore, but if you ever party together, no, we're breaking every rule. We're bringing flats. Yeah, let's do it. We're let's bringing do it. I, don't, I don't drink anymore, but I can still I don't know anymore. I know, I know, I know, but but you know, now nah, if that we're gonna swindle. Come on, let me in. Ooh, let me in. We, go. we have nothing to do, right? Yeah, I've, yeah. Good time. That's uh, that's pretty much it for uh, for Dahmer for this week. Yeah, you know, he, he takes his plane ticket, goes to Miami Beach. Ooh. 19, early 1980s Dahmer in Miami Beach, working at a delicatessen by day, going to gay nightclubs by night. Oh that's my God, we're... that's his playground! Because you know what? Yep. He's going to have, it's Miami. First of all, Miami is the capital of, um, hey, and Miami is um, like, a, you know, it's drinking, it's good weather, you have the beach. Yep. It was the 80s, so cocaine was everywhere, Scarface you was hanging out. Not specifically because of what Miami is known for? Or do you think he's cocaine? Oh yeah, he, he went there for the gay scene, for sure. Yeah. The free what a jerk. beaches of Miami. He wanted to prey upon the gay men. Oh, what a jerk. Yep. Miami is the gay capital. What a jerk. It's one of the gay capitals. Yeah. New York is not far behind. But what a jerk. What a jerk. What a jerk. Yeah, look, look at him, him sitting there sleeping. I just look at him to... sitting there passed out. What a great picture to end this part one for. Yeah. The dope. What, 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 a dope. what a derp, derp, derp. <laughs> well, that's it. And so part two, we're gonna get into some more violence. But the, you know, I figured part two Miami. Yeah, we'll part start two, we're going to Miami. Uh, he doesn't last long in Miami. I think we're gonna oh. pick back up in uh, in Ohio. I'm pretty sure. Of course, of course. You know what? Let me ask you. Do you think where was Jeffrey Dahmer's mom? Mom, where are you, mom? Where's Jeffrey Dahmer's mom? Off. I said that in the beginning. Uh, the parents uh, kind of when they divorced. I the I know mom, this like, but the mom was not involved because the dad was too busy with his new girlfriend. So where was the mom with her new boyfriend? Uh, so dad was very much involved in his life. I think the mom kind of sensed that something was off with Jeffrey. And he was already 18 at that point by the time they got divorced. And she kind of, you know, she took her son, went to go live with her relatives and just kind of moved on with her life. You know, I'm sure she kept up with him and okay. stayed in touch, but I don't think she was very involved in his life. You know, it's funny. I, I was having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine who's a parent, <laughs> and we were talking about how, like, you know, 18-year-olds, it's like, by 18, you're, you know, an adult. I'm like, 
no, not to me. On paper, you're an adult, sure, because you can go to jail, whatever, you can pay taxes. But your brain hasn't even finished developing yet. Hundred and I think percent. Um, I tell I was I was speaking with her and I was like, no, our kids are 18. I'd be like, what are you doing? Where are you going? What is going on over there? No, I'm going to be very much involved. That whole thing of like, I'm 18. I'm like, the hell you're not. Have a seat. Clean your room. Do the dishes. Like, what? Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, sorry. I got a, I got an interesting message. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're okay. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Bifi, I love how you ended on this picture, though. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely wop wop wop. Yeah, wop wop wop. Alistair, I heard you found something on the internet. Yes, yeah, let me show you something I found on the internet. Because uh, I'm going to read it to you. You can remove that uh, the picture. I'm going to read this to you because a made me gag. Speaking of 18 year olds. Biffy, I want you to tell me how you would handle this if this was your kid. I'm going to read this to you. A teenage girl found her mom's debit card and spent $64,000 on mobile what? games. What? On what? Mobile games, darling. Oh, gotcha games. And That's then, the thing. They're really then, addicting. That wiped out the family's life savings. She oh used up the God. entire life savings. Listen, listen, I don't believe in corporal punishment. That's when you hit your kid, right? I, not capital. Capital is when you kill them. <laughs> no, 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 corporal. No, honey, if that was Olympia, you best believe a few smacks here and oh, there. You can't see it. Child I, services. I instinctively oh, raised my hands to my face because I'm like picturing like, what do you even do? Like. Oh, uh, first I would spanking. be so angry. She no, we're the screaming and shouting, life. and we're spanking. Hundred percent. You're not escaping these hands. Ten hands. No, I'm going to pummel you legally in the head <laughs> because what? Not only is it sixty-four thousand dollars, but that's the entire life savings of the household. Yeah. No, you're being choked. They probably legally. to sell their home. I mean, she ruined their lives. Ruined their lives. And so it continues. Just a kid. Oh, it's so just a kid, awful. right? So. A teenage girl in China. Uh, oh, okay, so, wait, hold on. Pause for a second. Yeah. How how do you let your child rack up that much money? Oh. How are you so uninvested and not knowing what your kid is doing with their devices to yes. let it get that out of control? And furthermore, how are you not keeping track of I check my my debit cards and my bank accounts like every day. Daily. Because I'm curious. Yes. You know what's funny? Someone was telling me like you check them every day. I forgot who it was. It wasn't in front of my, it was some random person. I don't remember who it was because it was so in this in, uh, not significant. Someone was like, you check it every day. How exhausting. I'm like, no, it's not exhausting. It's on my phone. Two clicks. It takes two and seconds. Two seconds. Oh, look at that. Everything is where it's supposed to be. What? What? I don't understand how this family let that life savings go away like that. No, I yeah, guess. That's insane to me. No, the girl is eating outside. She's eating from the sewer. She's eating frogs from the sewers, Biffy. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, like, like so uh, very serious, though. I want to ask you, okay, if you and Christopher had built a life, you bought a house, and Olympia did that, like, say, eight-year-old Olympia, like, what, like, legitimately, what are you doing? I don't say eight because they, I don't think they'll know enough to wipe out the fortune. A teenager can. So if teenager how Olympia... Old, how old was this girl? 13. Okay, so... 13, what do you do? Uh, I told you, right? I will be absolutely livid. She's going to catch these hands legally. You can come at me. I don't give a crap. No, I'm going to scream and touch it with something. And... Um, oh, wait, what does that mean? You're not going to slap her. What? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Beefy. For something of this magnitude... I can tell you right now, I will be absolutely out of my mind because it's it's not even the fact that it's $64,000, but it's the fact that it's the entirety of the life savings of the household. Do you know what that means? Life is super hard. That means we all go down. We all go down. All well, go on down. A you're you're going to slap her? Uh yeah. If if I if I go like this, if if I if I go and I look at my bank account and I see everything is wiped out and I go, wait, what the hell's going on? And I look at like um uh you no know, blah 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 transaction, I'd be like, oh my god, Chris, I'll be screaming, I'll be absolutely mad, and yeah, I'm gonna spank her. I'm like, what what are you oh, doing? Okay, okay. Oh, oh hold hold on, hold on. 
Are you talking about a, a slap on the butt or a slap in the face? No, Beefy, that's what I said legally. No, I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm not okay. gonna come on. No, I said. Oh so my god, I, dude! No. I was really gonna concern us. I was so surprised we were so disconnected. No, about this. no, like, no. Slap that's your are you, daughter. <laughs> I use the word legally, legal, <laughs> like legally. So, like punching I'm, the I'm kid. Not gonna in the back of my head, I was like, oh, my God, this man is a monster. No, 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 no. <laughs> legal. Okay, okay. You're going to spank legal. Okay. Le yeah, yeah legal, legally. Right, legally. Right. Yeah, you can catch okay. this legal. That's yeah, right. I, I, I said that. I said I'm going to legally put hands on you. Okay. You know okay, what I mean? Okay. No, I'm not. What? No, I'm not. I'm not grabbing her by the neck on the floor, punching <laughs> her in the face. No, 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 no. Legal. Legal. I'm putting my legal yeah. 10 hands on her. Smack, smack on the butt. <laughs> You're so funny. No, legal. I think I've said that. Didn't I say that? Legal? Yeah, it's just, I, I think it's a translation thing. You know, I, I, I said slap. So a slap in, in English, when you say slap, that's a slap in the face. Like, you don't slap somebody's butt, really. It's a, that's called a spank. Okay, spank. But either way, she's legally catching 10 hands. Yeah. Legal. I don't know. How, how do you explain, how do I des describe to someone that, you know, it's, it's going to be much more than yelling, but in the legal terms? How would you say that? Because at this point, well, so that's the thing is, even nowadays, you might got to be careful with that. Because I, I, I believe in some states, even spanking. I, I I'm not, I'm not paranoid. What? To research this, but I've, I've heard of kids that got spanked that like brought CPS down on their parents. Yes. Okay, so um, I don't believe in I don't believe in corporal punishment. Corporal is when you hit the kid, right? Corporal, right. I don't believe in uh, corporal, corporal punishment. punishment. It's, is it corporal or corporate? No, corporal. I don't believe in yeah, corporal. Yeah, why would it be cor corporate punishment? Yeah, yeah. Like you I don't believe in corporal away. punishment. I think, <laughs> corporate I think, punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HR. <laughs> I think putting your, hands, putting your hands on your kids is wrong. Two-day paid suspension. <laughs> it's wrong. <Corporate> but, <clears throat> sorry. But depending on the severity of things, um, I do think that it's a... Uh, how do you say it? Um, depending on the conditions, but hitting your child for the purpose of like hurting, hurting, hurting. No, I'm not for that. Like the whole like uh, punching. I, I said legally, I, I would, legally. I so would like send her to be some legal, kind of, right? I would what? send her to some kind of like therapy or a camp or something to understand like one video game addiction, but also like to understand money. Like there would need to be a real shift in punishment for her to grasp the gravity of what she's done. Like a simple, you're grounded, or I'm taking away no, it wouldn't TV work. or whatever, it's not going to work. It, it, need, no, it, it, it wouldn't work. A, like, this needs to be a, a lifetime, impactful kind of punishment that will benefit her ultimately, but also will impress upon her, you cannot just throw $65,000 down the drain and have nothing happen. But There's going to of course, there's gonna be consequences, but no, yeah. it's much more than that. It's not just sixty-five thousand. It's it's the entirety of the family fortune. Yeah. And I think you know a lot. What what the the thing here is that, and I, we are, I believe that we're always. This is my belief. We're always one mistake away from complete disaster. And yeah. when a whole family fortune is gone, that means we can all be homeless. It's yeah. true. We can, depending on the situation, or we can. I won't be able to have the funds to, you know, go to the hospital. So one of us may may die. Like it's it's so severe. It's so severe to the spectrum. When the family loses the safety net, anything can happen, and that anything can mean death. It can mean homelessness. It can mean um, so many things, which in turn can create trauma on the kid. Do you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say? Like that. So I'm not. Her own well-being. You need yeah. to understand. I'm not stuck on the number. The sixty-four thousand dollars. I'm not really. St I'm stuck on the fact that it's the family's yeah. life savings. Yeah, it could have been. I'm like, oh God, oh could have oh been God. ten grand. Could have been five million. It's the context of the it's money. The context exactly. Because because if it's sixty-five thousand, but it's not the family's fortune, fine. Yeah, I'll deal yeah. with it like that. But the fact that it's. Because you know, first of all, sixty-five thousand, sixty-five thousand dollars in for uh, a household as an emergency fund is not a lot. Let's be, let's be very real. Oh, hi, little doggy. Let's be very real. Yeah, that's so, my meatball. Sorry. <laughs> so for that to be completely gone, it means that family has sacrificed so much to get to that point. So that wipes away all that sacrifice, and then it puts them back in a very difficult point. And the kid is young, only thirteen years old. 
who knows what plan they had on that money? Maybe bring her to college, maybe bring her, you know, whatever it may be. Like, that's that's what I mean, that the severity goes beyond just the number. The number is just the number. The context is that this is the life savings of the family. And to go back to Olympia, it, she won't be able to, first of all, even if she gets access to my debit card, number one, no, there's a lot of safeguards going on. You can rob me. You won't get a dime. There's a lot of safeguards going on. You won't get anything. So Olympia won't be able to even use the card <coughs> appropriately. It'll be like, decline. <laughs> it, won't, it won't work. But yeah. yeah why would you even give your kid a cell phone with access to credit cards with that yeah. amount of power? Like, you're giving your kid too much power. But yeah. that's what I was saying in the beginning is how you set yourself up for that to happen yeah. is kind of negligent on its face because they're just but kids. They're just kids. But then again, if you if you read more into it, what happened is that this money was in the savings account of the parents, which means that they don't, the parents don't know, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the financial knowledge to know. You don't put your you don't put your savings in a savings account. No. Um, they invest it? Is that what you're saying? Yes, your your so the money in your account. The money in your account should be only the operating cost of the household. Anything above that, including your safety nest, your your savings, have to be put in an investment account. Right. And people think, oh, but I want to liquidate. Oh, no, what? it's easy hold to on, liquidate. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, my God. Financial advice. <laughs> it's funny how every week it's become a recurring bit that we get there. Okay. Financial advice with Alistair. I hope that doesn't make me, I hope that doesn't make me feel like, sound like a snob. Or no, a, no. A I, I, say, I hope not. I think people appreciate it. Because honestly, like I'll tell you, you and I are in two completely different realms. Like You talk about that safety net. I, dude, I don't have one. Like If I, if I lost mm. an arm tomorrow, I'm like... That's so dry. I don't even know. I'd be like going to my parents, like, Dad, <laughs> help! I lost help the arm. <laughs> yeah, I need ten grand. Remember that thing you said yesterday? Where he has a ten thousand dollar problem. <laughs> How bad is that? Yeah, I'm in my thirties. I need to uh, change that. I mean, like, if I if if it really came down to like, I have stock options on my four hundred k or whatever. Like, if I really needed it, if there's a life Ooh. emergency. Yeah. I probably could. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget, there's tax there's tax penalties if you take it before the head of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not technically not supposed to touch it until like I'm like I'm until you something. until you're supposed to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, it's so funny. Financial advice with Alice there. Yeah. To anybody, who, I'm not snobbish. Please, I'm far from snob. You know, when I when I do my operations, I I have I believe in one thing. There's enough money for everybody. Greediness is a headache. You if you become greedy, you're gonna have a lot of headaches because. There's enough money for everyone. You don't no need to be greedy. You just have to, you know, put a little bit of salt here, salt here, salt here, and then <laughs> and when you retire, you have a cake. Yeah. <laughs> salt and cake. <laughs> the reason why I didn't use sugar because it's it, it salt. It's like it hurts to put money away. Like oh my god. Yeah, yeah. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. It's not sugar. Mm -hmm. well, actually, wait. Hang on. Before we, before we move on, let's. I want to ask you something. What's your position yeah. on NFTs and uh, cryptocurrency? Okay, so um, cryptocurrency is here to stay. As much as people might be like, oh my God, oh my God, it's not going anywhere because it's encroached in people's mind for the long run. It's not something that me and you are going to benefit from. Anybody who is not born, anybody who's born today or who's born up to this day, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is not for you. You're probably going to be dead before it becomes something of, sub of substance. So don't invest into it thinking you're going to reap any rewards. Yeah, for the we, long missed, term. we missed it's, the gold rush. It's finished. The gold rush is finished. However, what I do have to say, if you have any kids, you could put, um, now my rule is 10%, but I'm different. But you could put $5, anything that you, you want, yeah, big, any money you want to burn, put it into uh, assets for your kids. Put into like cryptocurrency and uh, NFT later on, because when you're dead, they're gonna be like 18 and 20. It might become something, but Bitcoin as far as I know, as as long as you, if you're alive today, you won't see any benefits of Bitcoin. Yeah, you're probably um, right. But honestly, no. Bitcoin is it's pretty safe. But like you said, you want your money to to work for you. You want your money like, to work for you. Yeah, send like little soldiers that come back and bring more soldiers. Yeah, bring back. more money. And also about <laughs> Bitcoin, here's the thing: like 
how do you like because they're trying to make you pay in bitcoin right like if i have bitcoin i pay you in bitcoin i just lost something super valuable so to speak and you just get like what how does that work how am i supposed to pay you bitcoin think about that if you think about it, if you if you have bitcoin stock and they ask you okay pay me in bitcoin stocks i'm not giving you my stock get out of here like what yeah. are you doing, right how like that's the problem with bitcoin like the transaction it's not really um like it's not meant for regular people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean and bitcoin mining is a headache it's just it's 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 not there yet and but by the time it gets to where it needs to be we'll be dead <laughs> yeah, they are pushing for like uh regulation regulation and, uh, they're not interested in to regulate anything because because the market is the market is a little bit volatile it's, uh, we just we just i was about to say that's that's what everybody says about crypto and NFT, nfts is how volatile it is which can be a good volatile. thing like you can make a lot of money because the market is volatile if yeah. you're smart if but you're honestly, smart, you need, lucky. You need to have the inside info to do that shit. And that's borderline on like, uh, what yeah. do they call that? Insider trading. Like, well, that, oh, you have to know, you have to know what you're doing. I don't know enough to be that bold. And also you have to be in it for um, the, the long run. There you go. But, oh, wait. Yeah, we still got enough. Financial advice with Alistair. We need like, a jingle, a jingle, like a little like, intro ditty thing. Like a, Ding, 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 financial advice with ah. Alistair. Financial advice. Financial advice with Alistair. Please don't look at me as snobbish. I'm not snobbish, I promise. No, 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 not at all. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know why I feel very self-conscious about that specifically? It's because someone, someone has said that to me and I was like, really? Okay. You're snobbish? It's a, um, um, uh, yeah, like in a sense, I, don't, that I, I, feel like I'm better than, I, I feel like I'm better than, which I was like, really? Because I drive a shitty car. I don't, I, I don't care about cars. I drive a crappy car and I wear the same clothes since I was 18 years old. Yeah, really, I was going to say, story. I don't get that energy from you at, at all. I get very uh, down to earth, like, uh, Perfect. you know, or, orders pizza on a Friday night and, you know, yeah. uh, like, you know, just like yeah, not blue collar, but uh, <laughs> you know, middle middle class. Middle class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. Perfect. No, well, you know. Honestly, I mean, if I if I was smarter with my money, I could probably I could probably get out of the middle class, but I'm not. So I'm right here, everybody. <laughs> Let me tell you, he's so funny. If you have a job, you're doing good. Most yeah. people most people don't have jobs. <laughs> And people scuff up, you know, when you do, when you make $30,000 a year, people make fun at that. No, $30,000 a year, it's not nothing. It's something. Listen, just get a job. You can work through anything if you have an income, anything. anything. Honestly, you know you know what? Like ever since I've gotten into like the corporate whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, I used to work construction. I worked with my hand. I did that for a very long time. It's very mm -hmm. much a uh, uh, New England pastime. It's, it's very much what we do. You know, we wake up at. So two o'clock in the morning and we drive to <laughs> other other end of new england yeah we put on our hard hats with our with our tools i pulled wrenches for a living you're like uh you know age of empires that game what is it the oh, age of empires yeah yeah, yeah yeah you guys are the construction <laughs> man <laughs> yeah. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh jeez, are you are you looking down at it no no oh, okay no 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 i said that as a joke uh, like to oh, make okay a you're good yeah, um, like, like, I was very proud of that. Honestly, I I loved no. taking home my paycheck and feeling like I yes. I physically earned that with my mm -hmm. hands. It was like, I don't know. It was a very surreal experience that uh, I miss. I I and you know I still work hard. It's just very different. Like I just sit at a computer all day. But uh, let <laughs> the, I don't mean to cut you off. Finish. <clears throat> You're good. I was, I was just going to say there's there's something primal about actually physically earning your money. Is I was about to say. Let me tell you something. Um, from my experience, the people who have the most potential to be super successful are people who have skills. Mm. Because uh, uh, when you are in a corporate ladder, when you're pen to paper, it's very easy to be complacent and relaxed and be like, okay, well, I'll just go to work and do my job. And when you have um, when you have actual skill, I don't know how to say it in English, but I hope it makes sense when I tell you when you have skills. You mean then, like... Uh, um... Yeah, like you build stuff, you you make uh, chairs, carpentry, yeah, 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 yeah. plumber. You're good, like, good with your hands, yeah. Yeah, the, the blue collar, 
you know what that does because there's the market is so not that saturated with it it gives you so much more opportunity than the ones who are uh, push pen to paper i'll tell you nowadays you can make more than probably 90 percent of the people who have bachelor's degrees yes. you, can, you can get into the trades and get paid to learn that and yeah. apprenticeship is you get paid to learn there's yeah. no school you go to work and you work and you get paid and you learn that trade and four yeah. years later after four years of work you get your journeyman's license which is what i did i worked an apprenticeship for four years Perfect. <clears throat> I got my journeyman's license and I became a sprinkler pipe fitter and uh, I made pretty damn good money. Like at one point, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I want to get into the you know, the exact financials of it, but I, I was making more than all my friends at the time working construction mm -hmm. and they went to college for some of them eight years. I mean, I, I, people that had doctorates were, uh, mm -hmm. you know, working as a manager at Dunkin' Donuts. That was a very real thing back in, uh, you know, late, late 90, 2000s, 2008, 2009, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the one crash. I, let me tell you, my brothers in law, um, and I'm very proud of that, and I, I, I preach that every second I, I, I get the chance to. My brother in law is a janitor, and my other brother in law is like an MTA, uh, MTA service person uh and um uh bouncer at the, well, look at uh, like even you you know you went to school for microbiology and you ended up getting into personal fitness and uh like exactly. entrepreneurship exactly completely different but my to, to my to my brother-in-law and they make <laughs> they make a great living my uh they they are all one two three four they're all six figures and you might wow. think to yourself, what what Oh, I didn't a tell you my janitor? other one. So janitor, yes, janitor. And the other one uh, does a, as a side job bouncer. Um, and uh, But his main job is a, a garbage a garbage uh, person, garbage person in, in New York City. They must be really smart with their money. So, no, they they work hard. They work hard. And uh, and uh, so the city pays for the education. And my brother-in-law, the janitor, janitor one, was like, I, you know what? I'm not good in school. I don't like school. And my mother-in-law was like, well, you know what, my love? You need to make a living. So what do you want to do? He's like, well, I do the janitor thing. And he did the janitor thing. He was like, you know what? I can climb up the janitor ladder. And he did. And he did. And I, I'm is he, I always is he in the him, union? I, I don't understand how he's working as a janitor and making over $100,000 a year. That doesn't yeah, matter. he makes me six figures. He makes six figures. I don't know. It's, he must be in a union. It's New York City. He must, he must be in a union. Yeah, he's in the union. <laughs> must okay. be in a union. It has to be. Yeah, it has to be. But uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't ask that many questions in terms of honestly, the uh, a hundred grand in a lot of unions. That's not that uncommon for people out there that don't yep, know that. Yep, you can yep. make well over six figures in but a he union. Climbed, he climbed his way up. Like yeah. he started at the, I don't know where janitors start, and then now he's the head janitor of the school, but yeah. he still, you know, works with his hands. That's why unions yeah. are so great. They they kept the fundamentals of what work is yep. supposed to be. I mean, when we, we talk about a 40-hour work week and paid holidays, those were established by the unions. Yep. And the reason that your brother-in-law is able to make six figures working in the union is because there are certain checkpoints that when you're working there for a certain amount of time, yep. you get promoted because mm -hmm. that's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah, he, he, he gets he's promoted. rewarded for your yep. loyalty, not shrouded for it like is in the private sector yep. where you work for a place for 10 years and they keep you at the same pay and pay. fight you tooth and nail to you get the raises you you gotta, yeah you gotta jump ship to get yep. whatever you're really worth the yep. unions are doing it the right way where if you want to stay in the union they'll pay you more to stay as yep. opposed to the other way around where you get paid more to leave yeah 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 sorry and, uh, Pet peeve no, no, it's, <laughs> and then all of my in-laws literally all of them are blue collar my the, yeah. the 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 father of ashley my niece he's a plumber please he has his own business all he does is drive around his car and fix people's toilet making banks what like like no i have i have utmost respect for people who work with their hands matter of fact that was like you you people in offices you don't even understand or you don't understand that person yeah, very that, uh that very similar like trade all... to what to what i did i did yeah. actually uh the uh, sprinkler footers license used to be under the plumbing license, it wasn't until I think like 20, 30 okay. years ago that it became its own uh, journeyman's okay. license. So, you see? yeah, I worked with pipe for I technically I still work with pipe. I just I manage and I sell. Mm. But yeah, I'm in the water business. You see? No, I have not. I've I've when I met Christopher's family, I, like I was like, you guys are shattered my perception of what like I was completely in love with every single one of like you know in terms of I was like wow what 
what? And I learned so much. I learned so much, and they they really get they really get in there. And I was like, the are they New Yorkers or are they from Jersey? They are New Yorkers, Staten Island. That's uh, okay, that's yeah, all yeah, the yeah. Italians are. Brooklyn and Staten one. Island. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I was I was trying to do my brother in law's job, you know, because I'm a I'm an idiot, I'm a goofing, but I'm you know I'm I'm in it, I'm in it. And I was like, please take me to work. I'll do it for free. Show me what you got. I couldn't do it. What, I couldn't do what, it. Which one? The garbage one. I couldn't do it. Oh hell no! I was hell like, no. I was like. Edward? The smell alone. Edward, what are we doing? <laughs> Edward's like, what? Whoop. And yeah, like, what did oh. you think? Picking up people's trash. Oh, God, I could never. Uh, uh, I'm okay. sorry. That's, that smell does mm -hmm. not come off. Okay. He goes home smelling like trash. Okay. No, he doesn't, though. That I have to say. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. But I remember I, I was like, know, okay, man. Edward, I'm going to go home early. Bye. And I was like, no. Yeah, all set. No, but he did it all day. Amazing. It's like the dudes on the job site that work at the installation and they get covered in that. Like, you ever touched by a, a oh, yeah! situation where you get like the little things in your arms? Oh, I, I remember I, I asked the guy on the job site one day about that because I was always curious. You touch it, you get like the little fiberglass <laughs> things sticking to you. I'm like, what yeah. do you do to get to, to get them off you? Like, how do you keep yourself from feeling that way all the time? Yeah. And you, know, you know what his answer was to me? What? You don't. You just get, you just get used to it. Yeah, you get used to it. I was it's like, no, no, I'm never going to get in a position where I'm getting used to the feeling of fiberglass. Oh, that feeling, I hate it. <laughs> now when I get home, I like, get it off me. Yeah, I don't know if, if people ever felt that, but I felt it. It feels like someone is being prickled. And it, like it's yeah, constantly, no, it, it's a it, horrible feeling. It literally is like the tiny little fibers of like, fiberglass. Yeah, like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, me? Oh yeah, you made you made a face like oh jeez. No, no, I was no, no, no. I was playing into and playing what you were saying with the fiberglass. glass. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Works. Oh beefy, you know it's because of the squirrels. You, I can't see your body language, yeah. so I'm just guessing what the <laughs> hell you're doing over there. No, 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 no. I know. What is beefy doing? Why Maybe, is he uh, doing? I'm gonna get the squirrel mask and I'll no, come I, on I, here I, one day. Oh, beefy, that's not a bad idea. That's a great idea, by the way. I'm just saying. We'll tease that for for season two. For season two, for next year, Beefy is twerking. No, I'll, guys. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Our thousand twerking. Nobody will know. Look, Beefy we'll is like to probably hundred percent naked. Subscribers, I will. I will come on camera. At a hundred, hundred subscribers. No, a thousand subscribers. Oh, a thousand subscribers. Okay. When we a get thousand. to a thousand subscribers, I, I'm not saying I won't come on with a mask, but I will come on to camera. Whoa! Look at that. Well, I, you know maybe what? I will. I don't know. We'll see. So that look, this is. Good, a good plug. Everybody, please press like, because yeah. I haven't seen. B I don't even know how he looks like. Everybody, it's yeah, I'm right curious. Now. I'm curious. Come on, everybody, press like, press like, press. Look, we, like. we only get one chance for the fucking face reveal. All right, like once you see it, there's no going back. So just savor it, people. <laughs> I I guarantee you, I look much better in in your head than I do in real life. So just keep that imaginary you're handsome so man in your, in your in your you're, brain. You're such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Beefy is such an idiot. You know, there's no such thing as a bad looking person, by the way. I want you to know that. And you know, let me, listen, I know people are like, shut up, Alistair. What are you talking about? No, listen, in my during my dating years, honey, everybody was fair game. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, he's a nice person. Mm. I'm very, uh, I'm very self-conscious. I actually I'm going to the dentist tomorrow and I'm like, it's been a big thing for me in a while is my teeth. I have a hole like in one of my front teeth. Oh. And because I I have like a, a a terrifying, crippling fear of the dentist. And I'm going tomorrow. I finally found a dentist that's gonna knock me out and fix, so I can smile again, like have a, a decent smile. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am freaking out about it. Last time they were gonna put me under, I didn't sleep, so they prescribed me a bunch of um, Ativan. They get Ativan. They're gonna, I gotta take it, and they're gonna put me under, and I'm gonna be all, all loopy and messed up tomorrow. Okay. No, it's. It's uh yeah, you're gonna feel super better uh because uh once you'll be able to do, like smile without being self conscious because mm -hmm. you feel you're self conscious now it's gonna be it's gonna be golden. Yeah, when I laugh, I cover my mouth. Oh really? I have a hole in my, I have a hole in one of my teeth. Yeah. It's um one very very one of my best friends. Uh, she got she got her teeth fixed as well, and uh, but her uh, it's a genetic it's a degenerative genetic thing with the with the bone on her whatever on her uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so um they had to do she had to wait a couple of years to get the tooth fixed but she had like no teeth and um i went to a bad dentist and my cavity fell out 
Oh, okay, fell out. Okay, like the tooth falls, right? Uh, no, no. So the cavity uh, was like loose, and I went and found another dentist, and I heard her in my mouth. She was like scraping, and I literally heard her say, what is that? Is it filling? Which is like not a good sign when you hear your, de- your dentist scraping away at stuff and saying, what is that? And then oh. I, I literally heard her, I heard her say the words, oh, geez, poor guy. And I wanted to say like, I'm awake. Like, I'm still right here. You're talking about my mouth. <laughs> but, so the, it was a cavity that fell out yeah it was bad i did, I got bad dental work okay well i'm glad you're getting fixed yeah yeah, yeah me too. Me fixed. Me it's going too. it's going to it's going to make you feel so much better yeah my yeah, mom's yeah. coming to pick me up and she says that uh she's gonna hold me down if she has to and i'm getting it i'm getting the teeth fixed it needs to get done <sighs> can i ask him the personal question sure of course how is your relationship with your parents <sighs> oh really good yeah, I love my mom. She's like one of my, oh, best, one of my best friends. My oh, dad, uh, my dad yeah. lives in Thailand though, so we don't um, like we, we try to stay Thailand. Oh, guys, because I don't know how you look like. So <laughs> you okay? So okay, where's your mom from? No, he's not. He's not from there. He married. Oh. Uh, he got married to a, a, Thai, a Thai woman. I am. So you're like half white, half and German. Thai. No, I'm no, I'm not Thai. I'm white. Okay, so you, but your mom is. You said your mom is Thai. No, no, no. It's I'm sorry. My dad's. New wife. It's technically his fifth wife. Oh, okay. You okay? Yeah, he gets around. <laughs> but yeah, his fifth wife he married uh, happened to be from Thailand, and they like she owned she owned a home. They sold, and they end up buying another house out there. But yeah, he lives in Florida in the winters now, in Thailand in the summer. So he's in Thailand right now. Are you on good terms? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're really close. Oh, cool. That's he doesn't uh, he doesn't touch base as much as I'd like to. He's kind of a pro- he's more of an introvert by nature as are my brothers but uh, um, my mom's very extroverted like i am so we talk like every day yeah oh you extroverts too. it's so exhausting i'm kidding i know no, yeah no. believe me I, it's uh, it's a struggle trying to deal with introverts because they're all they're like, like everybody in my life that i care about is like an introvert it's just like yeah, there's always like go away just leave me alone and this is like no what are you talking talk about to me here? love me here, here. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> christopher christopher is, is yeah Christopher, it's, oh, whatever. Christopher is a, it's a message. <laughs> Christopher oh, okay. is, is such an extrovert. It's such an extrovert. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like an, and he's, um. so I'm a toucher, but Christopher is um is a toucher and he's a um, um, words of affirmation. Oh my God. So I have to say like, you're so amazing. I love you so much. Wow, wow. Like, no, it's so funny. I, no, we laugh. We oh, laugh, so wait, laugh. it's just, is his love language touch or is it words it's of affirmation? a lot more words of affirmation, but it's also oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, That's good. yeah. But the sweetest thing is that his father, which I never met his dad, his father was a, a toucher. And, uh, unfortunately his father passed away. And, uh, and I, before we met one year before we met and, um, and he was like all over, all over his kids. Like, uh, you know, you're, you're like that too. You're, I am, uh, you're I am like that. I am like that. For introvert, it's like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, they don't like I am it. like that. And during my dating years, it gave it, it gave so many bad signals. I'm like, no, I don't really like you like that. But um, <laughs> it gives bad signals. Yeah, because if if uh, if you're into somebody, they yeah. don't know right away because you're all over them. Because I'm the same way. But I'm, I, like, I'm, uh, I'm all over expression. anybody I have a good time with. I don't have to. Yeah. I don't have to want to have sex with you. I'm all over you if I like you. Which is I have yeah. to be like, <laughs> to yourself, right? I have to learn. But People don't know that they go. Oh, he's touching me. I guess he likes me. I like you like that, but not like that. That. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I bet, you, I bet you're like me. If somebody you don't like tries to touch you, I bet you're like, no. Yeah. Yes. See, I'm the same oh. way. I like get off me. <laughs> don't fucking touch me. Don't touch me. So, which is so funny. Yeah, because it's like it's so it go. It's just uh, it's hard to explain, but it's just like the way you because yes. it's the way we express ourselves. If to get it reciprocated when you're not ready for it is like the worst thing in the world. And and uh, at the beginning, I, I needed to, because Americans get very iffy about that. And I, I needed to remember that, especially the, the heteros, I need to remember like, you know, at least they don't like that, you know? Uh, and it's just my observation. They like to keep a far enough distance, you know, because when I talk to you, this is your face. I'm, I'm talking to you, right? And then I touch your shoulder. I put my my arm on your shoulder. Let's say if you're talking, put my arm on your shoulder. I said, "What's going on today?" Like I'm really close. <laughs> I'm really close. People get, like you could you could smell my breath. I don't have bad breath, but like I'm that close. 
And uh, I've noticed that I've had to learn not to do that uh, yeah. in America because it's like borderline assault for some people. So it's well, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you got to be careful who you do it with. Yeah, you just gotta have no idea how it's automatic to me. It, even today, the the gardener came, and I was doing the same thing, and I and I remember I was like on his shoulder. I was talking to him about about the work. And he, I could see in his eyes, he blinked a little bit like, what are you doing? And then I had to remember, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I had to step I'm back. So I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry. But not because I, I like him. And I, yeah. you know, and it's like, it's like, oh no, it's okay. But I could see his body language was like, yeah. don't touch me. And I was well, like, you were, you were it well too, because it's, especially with the COVID thing, like for some people, it yeah. really is like assault. Because, and assault. technically they define assault as any unwanted touching. So you really do need touching. to be careful. Oh man. Yeah. yeah, I am. I am very, but something I had to learn because as a teenager, yeah. uh, no, nah. in, in my family, we were like that. Like I, I touch, I touch in my family, I touch, I play with your hair, you know, Ashy's hair. I play with my mother-in-law's hair. I touch Things my have brother. changed too. I remember even in like in high school, I'd go to see my boys and whatever, we give each other a fucking hug or, you know, you do dap up and then you give each other yep. a hug or whatever. That's, uh, that's not really a thing anymore. No, it's not a thing anymore. I've noticed that. Actually, funny story about that. Uh, a buddy of mine happened to be in the city that I live because he just had a daughter recently, and she's just not doing so well, actually. Um, she's, like, all hooked up to the – she's in the box with the kid. But So he's staying uh, at the hospital, yeah. and the hospital happened to be in the city that I live in. And I hadn't seen this guy since high school, so he came yeah. over. Uh, beef was not he smoked the bowl. I'm playing whatever. I smoked the fucking bowl. Okay, it's legal. Whatever. So he came by, and he just wanted to get out of the hospital for a little while. You know what I mean? But, again – like I hadn't seen him since high school, yeah. so I go down there and uh, I, you know, we do the dap up or whatever. And he <laughs> went in just like in high school to like give me the the reach around hug. And because it had been so long since I had like seen it, and he, you know, because like we knew each other from high school, we probably used to do it all the time. You know, okay. it was like a regular thing. But yeah. I'm in like uh, you know 2023 mode where like <laughs> I live on my computer, like. You touch somebody, you go to jail. So for me, I was like, we did the dap up, and he went to go with the hug, and it was like I kind of just like I froze for a second, and then like, but I felt bad, so I wanted to like reciprocate, like, oh no, we can do the thing. Like I went yeah. to go do it afterwards, and it was all awkward. Like I was like, oh yeah, yeah it was so fucking bad. But like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny how you, how you lose you lose those skills after a while. You know what I mean? Like if you know yeah. out there in the world interacting yeah. with people and learning, like you you can very much. Uh, Get too accustomed to uh, you get too accustomed. Home. Yeah, that's why it's uh, uh, like, like I said to people, I'm, I'm always I'm very different when I'm comfortable. People in my circle, I'm a different person. As much as an introvert, I'm loud. I, I, I do touch a lot. I do touch a lot. Even the heteros in my family at the beginning, they were like, okay. They were, I, do, I do touch a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm not rubbing your hair if you're a man. You know, I'm conscious of that, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on your shoulder. As, I'm yeah, as long as shoulder. you're uh, as long as you're doing it with people who are oh, comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, I'm polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's, polite. I'm it's always actually a polite. very uh, a very <laughs> charming and and loving attribute to be touchy like that because people yeah. don't like I'm I said polite. people don't get it nowadays. So it, it does happen to me every now and again. I yeah. get somebody that's touchy, and because I am that way too, as long as I'm comfortable with that person. Uh, yeah, it can like, be I'm very. Not, I'm not holding your waist. No, I'm, I'm yeah, polite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like rubbing your hair like that. No, yeah. I am. I am within boundaries of politeness, but that's my my way of showing you that I care about you. Is not telling yeah. you I like you. It's not same, telling same, you. Same. No, it's it's to have hold close, hold contact. hands, arm over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Now hold hands might be too much for a man, but I I do it with my female friends, or um or I go like that and I I. Or like if they're laying on the couch, I do that a lot with my mother-in-law. If she lays on the couch, on the couch, I say, "Mom, do you want a massage?" She goes, "Sure," and I give her a massage. But it's not nothing sexual, nothing inappropriate. Not with my brother-in-law, the way I do it, because you know they're like, "Whoa, they really like that." Now I'm not gonna give them a massage, but you know if we're talking, I'm like, "Do you want to go smoke a cigar?" It's like, "Sure, why not?" And we go and we smoke a cigar, and I, I just, I just lean on him. Is yeah, that yeah, it's funny you say. It's funny you're saying this too, because like. Uh... For a while there, my family and I, uh, like, we still kind of stayed in touch or whatever, but, like, we would only really see each other because yeah. we're all living in different states for holidays. And I found myself during holidays, like, just, like you're saying, wanting to touch my brothers. Like, just, like, again, it's I'm the same way. It's just yeah. how I express myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, because, like, I'm not just going to walk up and be like, hey, give me a hug. It's kind of fucking weird. It would, like, manifest itself in weird ways where I'm like, 
you know, patting my brother on the stomach or whatever and like yeah. being joking with him. And it's just like, yeah. I don't fucking know, man. I guess it's good to no. see you. I just fucking, and uh, yeah, it's, I, I never really pieced together. That's what was happening is it was, it yeah. was me just wanting to Automatic. connect just with them in the way, of, like yeah, the way of how I uh, pre, uh, show that affection. And it just happened to manifest itself in like joking ways where I'm fucking like rubbing my brother's belly, like, oh, chubby, chubby, chubby. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, no, I just want to touch you. <laughs> funny. That's really funny. It's, it's like th therapy sessions with Fifi. I'm figuring out things about myself. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh my God. You know, I I rave about my therapist uh, a lot. You know, she's she wants to retire, so you can't let her. Right? You need her. <laughs> yeah. And like, no, really, really. She's like, Alistair, <laughs> I'm tired. She's old. You know, I, I can't she's... take any more of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was my therapist since I was uh, a teenager. Oh, so she's wow. Old. She's old. She's old. Matter of fact, like she's second, not even... Must be, like a, must be like a second mom. Yes. Wait, actually, did you say she's out of network? Yeah, she's not in my network because she was. She came out of retirement to help me. Oh. I don't so think she's paying, expensive. But you're she's paying getting, out of pocket? You're I'm paying out of pocket. Wow, yeah. that must be expensive. But you know what? It's worth it. You have no idea it's worth it because in the long run it's, it saves me money in the long run. I know, I know, I know. It's because because no, it, it makes um, sense. Because if you're operating at 110 at all the time be, with your therapy, you're able to make that much more money. Exactly, but also peace of mind, priceless. Because when you get into those funks, all operations stop. You can't. You can't oh, do it. Right? I'm so, trying to motivate myself to make see? YouTube videos right now because I'm stuck in it and it fucking it's a slog, man. You see, you see. So, it, like, if you like, the value I get is in the long run. Um, I it it slows down my downtime, and I'm I'm able to move move a lot more. So, no, it's completely worth it. Matter of fact, I I, I, I tell her I don't know what I'm gonna do when you when you expire because you know she's not young, yeah. right? And so she she laughs. We talk about death very openly. Matter of fact, we talk about death a lot. Uh, because I'm struggling well, I, with... Yeah, if you think about it a lot, then you should be talking about it. Yeah, I talk about it a lot because I'm, I'm struggling with my mother. My my, uh, uh, my mother is fine, but every time I see her, she looks different. Like the, the image of my mom oh. in my mind is not the same image that I see. Yeah, you see mom from when you're a kid. You go and exactly. see her and like, oh and my God. Every time I see... And I see her quite often. And every time I see her, there's... A little, a little she lives extra. in Canada. A little extra. No, she's in Maryland. Maryland. I see her and a little extra. I'm like, okay. That's so not far. Yeah, Jersey and Maryland are bordering states, aren't they? Yeah, they're not far at all. No, I see her quite often. I mean, I'm going to see her again uh, next week. I see her quite often, but every time right. there's a little something. I'm like, mm, yeah, one something. extra gray hair, a little wrinkle has right. gone a little further down her face. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, it's it's life. People go. Yeah. It's life. You and I will be gone one day. That's just life, and so. Um, I tell you, man, you want to you want to flash down memory lane. I, I deactivated my Facebook recently, and before I did, I just kind of like browsed through my friends to see what they're up to because I don't really spend a lot of time on that website. Mm. And holy fuck, it's like you look at and they're still the same people. Like you can see the face in there, but mm -hmm. like you think that they're still the eighteen year old kids that you went to high school with, and nope, nope, they're full fledged adults with full kids. Fledged. And wrinkles and, and balding and mm -hmm. fat, some of them. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, I'm glad I deactivated the Facebook. I don't need that. I don't need that reminder. Uh, my my Facebook died. I use it for personal use, but it died when I, Olympia was born. I just didn't have it at the time. My uh, my time oh, management smart. is so tight. Yeah. The, the YouTubing, this thing right here normally would be my downtime, but this is my downtime. Like if, if you the schedule of my life, I don't have any more. Uh, just to be clear, I still exercise. I still get my little <sighs> once in a while, and uh, and I haven't drank. I never was a big drinker, uh, but I still get my happy moment, and I spend a lot more time with family now. I've never spent this much time with my family. Well, including family in time can count as downtime too if you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do enjoy it. I, I but it's not just me, Chris, and Olympia. It's everybody like it's the oh yeah that's uh, gonna be a little my in -law, oh my god even my my own family and my in-laws are like this so my mother my sister my brother are in tune with my brother-in-law my sister-in-law so we all huge there's so many of them <laughs> so many of them but it is absolutely uh 
I'm in love. When I tell you I'm in love, like at a moment, I haven't really, um, there's a friends I haven't really seen because I don't know where to fit them into into this yeah. time schedule. I'm not compromising. Care about your family, family. yeah. I mean, family I'm first. Not, yep, I'm not compromising uh, the YouTube. I'm not work compromising stuff. my exercising. I'm not compromising my work. So even though they're on the on the total to my priority, um, I, I, you know, it's it's either the YouTube or the priorities. Yeah. I, I jungle what I can, but uh, there's a few things I'm not compromising, which is family time and my time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Priorities mm. are in the right place. Good for you. Yeah. The final thought. You don't, you don't have a final thought? Uh, uh Yes. About Dharma. Mm. So, um, you know what? No final thought. I'm done talking. People are probably like, what the hell is going on? Look, okay, this is what I'm going to say. I got, go a, final go I got go a final ahead. thought. I got a final thought. Go ahead. No matter what's going on in your life for the next week, I want you to take, whether it's five minutes, whether it's three hours, I want you to take time for you, where you put everybody else away, whether it's work, whether it's your sister, it's the kids that are driving you crazy. Because if we don't take time for ourselves, nobody else is going to take time for us. That's what I'm learning the hard way. If you're not an advocate for yourself, nobody's going to say, hey, Tim really needs, I said my name. <laughs> Beefy, okay. really, beefy, really, I don't care. My name's Tim. Uh, there you go. Hi, Tim. Uh, but yeah, beefy really needs five minutes for himself today. Yeah. Why don't we make sure we set aside five minutes for Tim so he can calm down and do whatever he needs to do because he's depressed. Nobody is ever going to do that for beef. Beef needs to do that for beef. So this week, yes! be an advocate for yourself. Yes! Take that five minutes. Take that yes! five hours. Take those five days and yes! do what you need to to make sure that yeah. you are okay because you're the only person who's going to do that for you. Beefy, you preach. Keep talking. Keep talking. I, Beefy, I have no yeah, that idea that you were, you were, no. Yes. All day. Every day. You have to come <laughs> first, Beefy. You have Amen. to come Amen, first. Amen, sister. Because if you are not first, you cannot be there for no one else. Amen. Beefy, you preach something that I've always said, but, you know, in my mind. Oh, Chills, chills. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I'm that, glad you like it. That's the secret. You have to come first. Forget the kids. I'm serious. Because yeah. if you're not okay, how you, you can't take care of the kids, kids if you're not. If yeah, you're not forget the kids. Forget, no, you come first. Oh, beefy. Amen. Yeah. Amen, sister. Yes, yes, yes. And with that, <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that mess. And then, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And transmission. Thank you for watching. Okay, so are we done recording? Can we talk candidly? Yeah. Beefy, so true, whatever you just said. You come first, Beefy. Every time. Amen. Every Amen. time.